In the last three weeks, I have signed 28 clients. And in this video, I wanna break down the biggest lessons that led me to getting to this place of massive momentum, as well as the biggest mistakes I have made and learned along not just the last few years, but specifically the last few weeks. So let me kind of take you back. We've had multiple different offers, or I've had multiple different offers over my time in the coaching consulting space. Flashback to 2018, I was a done for you agency doing everything for everyone. Then flash 40 years, I focused our agency in on one person, one problem. We were helping coaches get sales calls, flash forward another year. We then evolved into a coaching company that had the agency in the background and coaching on the forefront. And we were then coaching people on how to do what our agency did for other people. As time went on, things evolved, but I basically had the same offer, which was you come in, it's you know 16 weeks-ish, something like that. And then we have one-to-one, -one, we're doing done-for-you recruitment and all sorts of stuff. I, I did the whole adding bells and whistles and things like that to get people to say yes. And over the last six months, I've radically changed the business. I do a lot of one-to-one -one coaching and consulting, and I've really done not much else other than that. And there has been this craving in me, uh, this mission almost, to create a community. Create the community I wish I had in my journey to scale to a million and beyond. And so that's where this uh, new offer came out of. So let me just bring you into the actual kind of moment of conception. Uh, my wife and I were in London three and a half weeks ago and I'm sitting with her at breakfast and I'm in the midst of, you know, some great months and some great times of business uh, where it's simple, it's fun, it's profitable. And all I'm doing is basically selling my time at one-to-one -one coaching and consulting. And I say to my wife, Liv, I say, I feel like I'm supposed to launch this community. I feel like I, I wanna create the community I wished I was a part of, etc., etc. And what happened was in a space of 72 hours, I went from idea over breakfast to actually kind of conceiving of this thing. So I put together a document. I have a whole process where I sell via chat instead of sales calls. So I just kind of implemented that for this particular offer. And then what happened was uh, I started, I, I put it out there. I basically casually put out a story or two and I was like, hey, I'm launching this thing. If you've wanted to work with me before and maybe looking for a more affordable route, et cetera, et cetera. And four days later uh, from the idea to the that moment I have my first deposit to lock in for this start day. And the rest is history. It just momentum built. I think we were at 15 people in the community uh, for a $15,000 a year offer before it had even launched. Then once it launched, the momentum continued. And so now kind of three weeks later, we're at 28 clients uh, in this. And my goal over the next five months is to get it to 100 people. I wanted to share the biggest lessons that kind of helped something like that happen, right? 28 clients at $15,000 a year in three weeks is a pretty epic feat. And then you keep in mind, no ads, no sales calls, no delivery team like it literally takes me to deliver for these clients only three to four hours a week total and so it's very leveraged and very scalable and I wanted to share some of the biggest lessons as well as the mistakes that kind of allowed me to do this and kind of what I've learned in and throughout this process like I've got them jotted down on my phone I don't have some fancy script I wanted to create the video I wish I could watch from other people as like the behind the scenes like the thought process like you see the headline 28 clients in three weeks but like what does that actually look and feel like and so I wanted to bring you on that so the first big lesson here, um, I think this is applicable to everyone watching this. You never lose the fear of what if this doesn't work? So I'm sitting there in London and I'm like, okay, I've got this community uh, and I start putting kind of pen to paper and putting these, these details down of what it looks like. And it takes me a few days to get clear on what I think this will look like. And up until I got that first sale the whole way through and then even after the first sale, I was like, I don't know if this will keep selling. I was like freaking out. I was real insecure. I didn't know if it was actually gonna work. Now keep in mind, I've successfully launched and, and sold like four or five uh, coaching and consulting offers over the last few years. Like I know the offer basics, you know, I've read hundred million dollar offers. That all makes sense to me, but there's still a sense in me of like, what if people don't want me to be their coach? Like what if I've kind of lost it? What if, and, and I'm not even saying any of those uh, have truth or don't. It's just funny that we all struggle with those things. And one of the things I've been thinking about uh, a lot this week after being on a bunch of calls with one-to-one -one clients is our tendency to overthink ourselves into inaction. So if you know that at your level, at my level and beyond, 
We're all going to face fear. Isn't it better to learn how to deal with fear where you are rather than expecting that one day you won't have to deal with it at all? We, we look at someone like Alex Hormozzi or Patrick Bet David or Ed Milet or Gary V and we just assume that like they're just courageous and confident in everything they do rather than realizing that they face the same level of risk and maybe insecurity that we all face. And we actually have to learn to be courageous in the face of risk, not expecting for life to turn into a risk-free life, right? And so this has been an interesting thing for me because especially like yesterday, I was on a call with someone and about 20 minutes into the call, they were asking me questions and I felt like I was telling them stuff they already knew, right? It was like one of those calls where I was like, I don't think I'm giving you any new information right now. And then about 20 minutes in, he was like, you know what? I'm just completely overthinking this. This has been helpful. I'm just going to go do this. Thanks so much. And I thought that for me summarized most coaching conversations I've ever had, which of course there are moments where we educate people and we shift beliefs and we help people immeasurably, but there are also times where we're just telling people what they already know, but they're stuck in fear, they're stuck in inaction, they're stuck in overthinking. And this was just a big lesson for me that I, I don't think that's ever gonna go away for me. It probably won't go away for you. And so rather than waiting for life to be without risk, why don't you just learn to choose courage anyway whether it's launching an offer whether it's putting yourself out there and creating more content whether it's hiring a bigger team it's not about trying to create a risk-free fail-free environment it's about taking the courageous steps anyway of course preparing for the best hoping for the best but choosing courage over fear and this was something that kind of shocked me as i was like wow i feel insecure about this like what if it doesn't work uh, and obviously, even though now I'm on the other side, it is working, it is looking amazing, clients are getting incredible results, all of that. I know that this sense of insecurity is going to come up many different times and many different ways along the journey. And so I may as well learn to develop the skill of dealing with it now. So that's the first big lesson. Number two, and this is a really helpful offer tip, is that you want to sell a new opportunity, not an improvement. So this goes off something that Russell Brunson has talked about a lot. If you think about how he positions click funnels, right? There is websites and there are funnels. And he talks about how dumb websites are. Um, and then he talks about this amazing new idea called funnels. Now, if we just simplify things for a second, a funnel is a website. Right? But it's just, a, it's just a website with a focus, right? Instead of having lots of things that you can click on it, you kind of funnel people through from kind of a skeptic to lead to buyer or whatever it might be. But what he's done such a great job of is he's selling people a new opportunity. He is saying, hey, this old way of doing things is not the right way to do it anymore because of this, this, and this. And what we want to do is move towards this new opportunity. And I've seen this work time and again in every different niche and every different offer you can possibly imagine. But I also see people making the mistake all the time of ignoring this advice and just selling an improvement offer. So you look at their coaching offer or their service offer and it's like, I help coaches run Facebook ads. And you try and figure out where the actual value of that is. What's the unique mechanism? Is there a unique way that you do this? And they just kind of making it sound like they run Facebook ads. And uh, if you're already running ads, like we can run your ads better because I'm like a better media buyer. Or if you're not running ads, I can help you start. But there's no real new opportunity, right? And so they're, they're in a red ocean of looking exactly the same. Many coaches fall into the same trap. One of the things I think I did great with this launch, maybe versus others, is I really positioned it in such a way that it seemed like a new opportunity. And the, the reason it worked so well is because I was speaking beyond problems and solutions and I was speaking to values and aspirations. And so here's what I mean. Rather than saying, you're a coach who wants more clients, I'm going to help you get more clients with XYZ funnel. I actually didn't say anything like that and I didn't make any claims like that. Instead, what I was speaking to is a unique set of values that aligned with mine. So literally in the document I used to sell it, I talked about profit. And I said like, we are not people who are chasing vanity metrics, just wanting to get revenue and stripe screenshots. We wanna stack cash in the bank. That might sound the same as help you make more money, but it's very values based. I talked about how we're optimizing for fun, how we want to create a business that as it gets bigger, life gets better and not worse. We only want to work with A plus clients, like no dud clients from here on out, right? Our peace of mind is not for sale. Like this is some of the copy that I wrote in there. And as I think about what I wrote when I originally put this offer together, yes, it was speaking to outcomes, but it was speaking to a new way of doing business. That if I'm taking people who kind of I joke around is like they're coming from the bro scaling world, right? It's just like, you know, revenue, 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 growth, 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 scale, 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 no matter the cost. And then I'm creating an alternative path and an alternative goal for people to move towards. It's actually really compelling. It stands out massively. Like I've 
as creating this offer and the feedback that I've got so far from the 28 people that have joined and are loving it is that this is just really different, right? It's not the same as what everyone else is doing and I'm just trying to make it better. It's really different. I also majored on the fact that this is a community. I said, this isn't the Dan Club. Uh, this is a community of ambitious and generous coaches and consultants coming together to actively contribute and support to one another. And you hear that when it comes to coaching programs, it's like, and there's a, a community as well. <laughs> like we've got a support group, it's a Facebook group, but I made this the focal point of what it is that we are going to be doing together is this is our community and do not join if you are not ready to contribute and be a part of a community. So the selling the new opportunity I think is huge, uh, hugely important. You don't wanna look at your offer and think that it's just, or you'll have your prospects think it's just an improvement offer. It needs to look like a new opportunity. And the new opportunity can both be the unique mechanism, but it can also be a new aspiration you move people towards. It's not just helping you make more money, it might be helping you stack more profit. It might be helping you minimize your hours whatever it is that's a new opportunity to help people focus on not just more of the same but different so that was a big lesson for me and i hope that's kind of a good reminder for some of you to look at your offer through that lens number three this is very practical okay you're likely not talking about your offer enough at the end of this month, uh, I'm coming up to the end of June here, I am ready to stop talking about the community publicly. Like the community will then just kind of go into the back burner and my goal is to kind of get eight to 10 clients a month uh, with this offer between now and the end of the year. And I think I'll be able to do that uh, absolutely fine. It's totally doable. And, and I'll do that just through really focusing all my marketing on content and audience building and then kind of have calls to action every now and then. But what I've done to launch it is I have talked about it a lot. We're talking newsfeed, stories, emails, me privately messaging people who are asking for information or maybe someone reached out for one-to-one -one information three months ago, it was too expensive for them, so I'm reaching back out to them and saying, hey, I have this new offer, You know, would you be interested in getting the info? And so you wanna talk about your offer, especially like there's probably a rule of thumb here that's like consistently talk more about your offer, right? Because you probably don't talk about it enough. If your audience can't clearly articulate what Dan does, what Joe does, what Chris does, what Sarah does, you're probably not talking about your offer enough. So that's lesson number one is talk about your offer and make it really clear and simple who you help, how it works. You don't have to disclose price and things like that. Of course, there's context and uh, details that you'll leave to a sales call. But the mistake I see so many people make is they only have their offer details at like the last 10 minutes for sales call and their market and the audience really has no idea what they do. So that's like kind of the lesson number one in this piece. But the second thing is when you are going through a launch or a relaunch phase, you want it to be like every neon sign in your world is blasting that you have something new, that there is uh, something that people need to get in on it now, that there's real urgency and scarcity. Like with the end of this month, the price increases by 3,000 a year. So that's been a key part of my messaging. And one of the things that I've been reminded of during this launch cycle is that the algorithm does not show every post to every person. And so I feel like I'm talking about it a lot, but I'm still probably not even hitting a lot of my audience. So we often mistake our own perception of it to everyone else's. Like I'll never forget hearing a story. Uh, I can't remember if it was, um, I'm gonna butcher the, the name, but the context still matters. It was either Ogilvy um, or it was Henry Ford, but it was basically like a car ad. And it was either Ogilvy or Henry Ford, Ogilvy being the advertiser, Henry Ford being kind of the, the guy who owns Ford. But basically this guy was walking past um, the marketing department every single day. And he kept seeing the same ad up on the wall um, that they were running and it was about this new Ford motor car. And he said to them, guys, when are we gonna stop, stop running this ad? I'm so sick of it already. And they're like, what are you talking about? We haven't even launched the ad yet. And so he'd been seeing it so much, thinking that everyone else in their market had been seeing it just as much, but all that was happening is he was seeing it around the office, right, everywhere in the office because they were still designing it, ready to launch. And that lesson in there is so important for the, those of us that market offers, is oftentimes when we think we're talking about it too much, the audience might just be getting it enough. Right, So there's a discrepancy in volume between what we put out and what people actually have to uh, get to see. And so we wanna make sure that we're amplifying during times of launch and relaunch, we're talking about our offer 
a lot. And the key here is then just make it a defined period of time. I could not and would not want to sustain this level of marketing between now and the end of the year, every day of the year, right? That That's not sustainable. It's not desirable. But for this launch sequence, I've wanted to make sure that every single person who's at least a little bit interested gets the information. Every single person who is on the fence and wants to jump in is gets that opportunity to do that. So that's just a big lesson for me is you're likely not talking about your offer enough. Number four, and then I've got two more lessons and then a few mistakes, um, some big mistakes for sure. Invest in the asset of an audience. This has been a big lesson for me uh, recently. If you think about what investing is, what we're trying to do is buy low, sell high, right? We're trying to buy something that appreciates over time, whether it's a house, whether it's a car, whether it's a piece of art, whether it's crypto, you know, poo poo coin, whatever it might be. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to like bet on something that we think that over time is going to appreciate and the ROI is going to be worth it. One of the things that is so underrated is that when it comes to coaches and consultants, we're all about talking about crypto and like, oh, I'm going to buy real estate and whatever else. But very few of us actually think about the investment of building an audience that when you create great content and you put it in front of many eyeballs over many years, what you're not doing is just creating an asset of the content. It's not just about like creating one video and going, this is a great video. I hope it makes me a lot of money over time. That's how small brains think. That's how short termers think. When you're thinking about it in the right way, you start to see the asset being the audience, that it's not just the one piece of content. It's all of the content and all of the touch points that this audience has had, all of the goodwill that we've deposited into the relationship, the way in which our reputation has been built over time. And so, you know, someone asked me the other day, they said, I'm just starting out. Could Do you think I could get results like yours? Like in terms of like, in other words, like, hey, I know you've just got 28 clients in a few weeks. Like, do you think that would be possible for me if I'm just starting out? And the answer is like, hell no, <laughs> right? And the reason is, is because I've built an audience over years. Now that doesn't mean you can't get some semblance of results like that because you're using the strategies that we use. But the point being is I've built an audience. Now, the cool thing about this is when I say audience, I'm talking about thousands of people, not tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions, right? You don't need a mega audience to make a lot of money. Like I had a Facebook group, its peak was like 7,500. We made millions from that group. So you don't need a huge audience, but what you do need is an audience of people you've been investing into over a long period of time. People who feel like you've given more than you've asked. People that feel like you've put more deposits in the relational account that you've withdrawn from them. And I just think this is a huge mind shift for me again in this season and just going forward is like, I'm doubling down on continuing to contribute to building an audience, both monetarily like I can see myself get going from on track for 1 million in profit this year. The goal next year I think is like two to 3 million, but I'm gonna be able to get there without much more expenses uh, around coaching and things like that in terms of what I have to invest to fulfill for clients. But where the investment will be going is into content to build and nurture the audience I have and to grow it beyond that because I know that that's the asset that will be uh, helping me out and helping fill future launches and help and all of that kind of stuff. Not just to mention the fact that it's like so connected to my own mission, which is just to serve and help as many people in this way as possible. So number four is just like invest in the uh, asset of an audience. And then number five, this is a big uh, thing when it comes to kind of what it is you're selling. We all crave a deep sense of belonging. So I alluded to this before, but like the offer I've launched this month is built around community. It's built around this idea that we're not meant to do this journey alone. You're not meant to be isolated. It doesn't have to be lonely at the top. And so I've focused so much of my time and energy on creating this offer in such a way that people get to connect both online and offline as we'll be running a number of events throughout the year. And so this has been a big lesson for me that, you know, recently when I launched one-to-one -one coaching, I was reminded, goodness, like selling your time is a very, very great strategy, despite what you might hear, uh, to make a lot of money and have a really simple business if you do it right. So that was like that one-to-one -one piece was really compelling for me of like, oh, we might have misunderstood something around this part of our business. And so one-to-one -one can be a really powerful lever. The other thing I'm realizing in this moment at the end of kind of this big launch is that people deeply crave community. And so if you can plug into your offer a deep sense of camaraderie, community, not just where there's a support channel where people can ask, but where culturally you're establishing from the point of sale that this is about community. Because here's the craziest thing. I've had a point uh, at our peak, I think we had 110 or 120 clients. Now that we have this new community, we have 
way more engagement than my old version of the coaching programs have ever had because from the outset of the sale, we've created the expectation of the culture that this is not just about you and your own little experience, this is about community. And that sense that everyone craves community and a sense of belonging, I think has massively helped in the sale. I think it will massively help in the delivery and also in the scalability of this offer because people ask questions in the group, I don't even have to answer most of them because it's already got 10 answers by the time I get there because people are in this together. So those have been the biggest lessons. Let me quickly flick through some of the biggest mistakes that I will hopefully help you avoid this whenever you're going through a season of growth or maybe just even in your business today. Number one is just reminding myself that we need to manage energy, not time. So that was one of the things that uh, it was a, it kind of took me by surprise this month. So I launched this community. I set a date in the future. I think it was, I was get, taking deposits for like two weeks before the launch. Then there was a launch date. I think it was June 15th or something like that. And during those first few weeks, I was just like, I'm going to be creating the content live. And so that's why everyone got in at that cheaper price point. It increases at the end of the month because a lot of this content is being created as we go in this month of June. I have ample time to create that curriculum but I haven't had ample energy. I completely forgot how draining creating a lot of content can be if you need to pump out five modules in a day. Now, you might have the time to do that, but you might not have the energy to do that. And so managing your energy and not time is such an important principle in business that especially there's a huge difference between sitting at your desk and replying to Slack messages all day uh, and being on Zoom calls versus needing to be creative. So big lesson for me there is never overestimating or underestimating the energy component. Even though I can make the time work, can I make the energy work? Number two, uh, this was a big one, man. Uh, I got in trouble for my wife. So creating and maintaining clear boundaries. So I mentioned we were in Paris, uh, sorry, London a few weeks ago. We then went on to Paris for a week. And this was also when I decided to uh, start taking deposits for the program. And I think in that week, I might've done 10 or 15 sales in that first week, but I was also supposed to be on holiday with my wife in Paris. Now, we had an amazing time. We had lots of quality time together. We had no kids, thank goodness. Um, love my kids, but seriously, parents know how, how, what a gift it is to be away from the kids sometimes. And so we had ample time together, but there was still a lot of moments that I was really distracted. And the reason is, is I don't have a sales team, so I was doing all the sales myself. And they're really simple to do with our chat, chat DM closing system. But the point was, I was still doing them. And so my wife would be like, hey, babe, can you? And I'm like, just one second, I'm just closing a client you know, my adrenaline surging because I'm freaking making a sale. And I came back uh, from that time in Paris and I realized like, oh, I need to create like stronger boundaries uh, around how I am in work and in, in and around family. And so I literally have two phones now. I have uh, this phone here and this phone has no social media on it and it's just kind of the bare essentials and this is the one I carry around with me everywhere I go. And then I have another phone that is bright pink so Liv knows when I'm working and it has all social media, you know, messenger, it's got the school group for our community and so on and so forth. And so um, now I can distinguish and create boundaries with that. So it means first thing in the morning when I turn my phone off airplane mode, I'm not bombarded with 30 notifications like it used to be. There's like nothing on here. So I just like turn it off and there's like maybe one WhatsApp message from a friend. Same thing when I'm going to bed, my pink phone, the work phone is not on me, it's in the office. And so again, I've just created a much clearer, healthier boundary around work that has been really, really good. Number three, biggest mistake uh, that I had in, over the last month was not being true to the season that I'm in. And this wasn't completely the case in that it wasn't like I just went the opposite of what I've been doing. But for me this year, the priority is massively health, slowing down the pace, and really creating that kind of work-life harmony where it's not just about how many hours I work in the business, but it's about the energy with which I'm working in the business. Like for years, many of you will be able to resonate with this. I was living out of push energy, right? It was it was like adrenaline, caffeine-fueled, cortisol, like I'm just trying to go, 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 and push this as far as I can go. And while I didn't get there quite this month and didn't dip into my old self completely, I felt that sense of like, you know, when I'm at 10 clients, I'm like, oh man, let's get to 15. Oh, let's get to 20. And the more messages I was responding to, the more content I was posting, the more money I was making. Like imagine a reality where every time you open your phone, you make a thousand dollars. Now that sounds absurd, but if that was the case, how often would you be opening your phone? Probably a lot. 
And that's how I felt over the last month is that every time I was opening my phone, like there were times where I was telling Liv, like I just signed my third client for the day or my fourth client for the day, right? And so that sense of like dipping into push energy, like, like go, 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 that started to happen this month. And so I realized I was like out of alignment with the season that I feel like I'm in and probably the way I ever wanna build my business. Like, of course there are times we need to push, but that's not how I wanna build my business all the time. And so that was a really big, not so much a mistake, but just a reflection and a recalibration that I had to make that our life has seasons and every season demands different things of us. We cannot have it all and have it all at once. I cannot both have the most insanely profitable year ever and be my healthiest if I don't do it in the right way. And so we want to make sure that we're approaching the season we're in. Firstly, we know the season we're in. And secondly, we're approaching it and making decisions based off of that. And then last but not least, a kind of a personal one, hopefully these are all personal, but this only happened a couple of days ago, is uh, allowing my confidence to be shaken. So 28 clients, one of them, four days ago, keep in mind, they all signed 12 month contracts. One of them uh, reached out a few days ago and was like, hey, um, there's nothing new here for me, uh, I want out. And I was really surprised because this person's like at three or 5,000 a month, which, you know, if you're at that stage, please don't take this like I'm looking down on you. But this person I know, because we've I worked together in the past before, he's been stuck for a really, really long time. And so he reaches back out and he's like, hey, there's nothing new here and da da da, and I want a refund and I'm out. And so like, you know, we, we kind of deal with that situation. And it kind of taught me a few lessons. Firstly, like I needed to be stricter on the criteria coming in, like, we're not allowing anyone who needs to desperately make money in the next 30 days to join the community because that creates way too much stress. But for a few hours, I was like pissed off. I was like, man, like this guy. And then I was also like doubting myself, like, oh man, maybe he's right. Like maybe I need to be more creative or like maybe I need to be bringing like way, putting way more effort into the modules. Like maybe they're not good enough. And then I started thinking about the fact that I'm like, wait a minute, I'm literally sharing everything that I'm doing in my business to kind of get to where I am in this community. So I'm holding nothing back, that's number one. Number two is we have so many people posting in the group every day of all of the wins they're experiencing in this community so far. And I was letting one person and their attitude and their experience affect the way I thought about all of them. And it was just a great reminder that like, you're never gonna be loved by everybody. You're never gonna be able to do right by everybody. And so you can't let that shake your confidence. You can't let that hold you back or slow you down or stop you from continuing to pursue towards your goals. And so those are some of the biggest mistakes or, or kind of reflections I've had on this month that you know I would do it differently. I would do it better. Um, but I'm hoping this video has been helpful. If you would like me to break down the exact kind of posting schedule the kind of cash campaign side of it of exactly how I executed on this launch, then let me know in the comments below. We're more than happy to share that. And uh, other than that, I'll see you in another video. Thanks for watching.